Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, for uh, the, the friendship that we have in you. Father, tonight, Lord, we could sing, What a friend we have in Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, God, for that kind of friendship, that kind of a fellowship, that kind of hope, that kind of help that you offer to us. Lord, help us, Lord, tonight to come to the conclusion that you didn't just rescue us from hell, but you rescued us for a relationship. You rescued us because you wanted to have fellowship with us, the original purpose that you created mankind for to begin with. Lord, tonight, Lord, we want to give you all praise, honor, and glory. Lord, we pray for those who are, are uh, in need of prayer, Lord, for those who have lost loved ones, uh, Lord, for the, uh, the, for the Devers family, uh, Lord, whose uh, young daughter has passed away recently. Lord, we give you praise at the same time, Lord, for Brother Gary and Sister uh, uh, Myrtle Henry as they have received good reports from their physicians. But, Father, there are the, still those who need help. There are still those who need a healing. Father, we're asking right now, for anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, let the healing, the healing balm of the Holy Spirit, Lord, just fill this place and fill the places where people need healing in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen, Amen. amen. Who's the devil's family? Excuse me? Who's the devil's family? Uh, somebody who's... Oh. <laughs> she made them go here. No. Them. Friends, of, friends of the family. Um, tonight we'll be in Psalms 40. But I just want to... Uh, let me, let me just make a few statements here, then we'll, we'll, we'll have our reading of, of the psalm. Uh, most of us, we, you know, we enjoy our home. Um, the cars are pretty good. Cut, you know, it gets you from here to there. But the payments for the house and the upkeep and what it takes to own those, it's just, it's a burden. And, but, and maybe, there's, maybe there's something that, uh, you know, you've got uh, some sort of a debt someplace. And they'll... I was talking with somebody the other day, um, and uh, they uh, they asked, you know, what college I'd gone to, and of course I mentioned it was HKU, Hard Knocks University, um, <laughs> and then he and he was talking about how he went to college and he's fairly smart, seems to be fairly successful, makes pretty good money. He says, yeah, but a good portion of that money goes to my student loan, <laughs> and he said, I don't know if I'll ever get out from underneath that, and then of course then you're going to have uh, Credit card debt, throw that in the mix. Um, you know, all, all the sorts of things that we have. I mean, you work hard to stay ahead of your obligations, but then the interest grows. And you feel the weight of debt hanging over you. I, I mean, it, it's like some great stone that is suspended just by a thread, just waiting to drop. You're, just, you're, you're not waiting for the shoe to drop. You're waiting for the stone to hit you. See, it's, it's easy to feel that way. It's easy to feel that way about sin in our life. But you know, unlike uh, financial obligations, when God saves us, this, this is what I'm saying, when God saves us, there is no form of repayment required. Did you hear what? There's no form of repayment, repayment required. Now, I realize that the Word of God says that we were saved for good works. But the good works, are, it's not a repayment of a debt. The debt of your sin was, full, it was paid in full. The, the things that we, we do in service for the Lord is a privilege. The things that we do in service for the Lord is, is part of being released to be free. Uh, someone says it was for freedom that you've been set free. Oh, wait a second. Who said that? It was in the scriptures. Well, why was I set free? For freedom. Uh, and, and if you don't come to understand this, I've, I've preached this several times over the last couple of months. Often we see the, uh, the lack of understanding about the scripture and about holy living, about sanctification. And, and to someone who doesn't understand these things, our faith seems to be like a straitjacket. Can't do nothing. Don't do this. Don't do that. Uh, but that's not what it's about. It's about freedom. Amen? So open your Bible to Psalm chapter 40 tonight. And uh, read along if you would like. Psalm 40. To the chief musician, a song of David. I waited patiently for the Lord. 
and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an affordable pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us for it. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. For innumerable evils have compassed me about. Mine iniquities have taken hold upon me, so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head. Therefore, my heart faileth me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. Let them be desolate for a reward of their shame that say unto me, Aha, aha. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually, The Lord be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarry, O my God. When God saves us there is no payment no repayment required David he sings to God in this particular psalm he sings about uh, about how God lifted him up out of that slimy pit out of that mud out of that mire how he was saved from the from the wretched man that he was to become a, and to be known as a friend of God, and and we know David was known as a man after God's own heart. And uh, does that mean he never sinned? If you read the scripture, you'll find out David had some problems. Amen. Yet still, he was a man after God's own heart. Like David, we are all born into sin but God rescued us from the debt that comes with it it's been said many times sin will take you farther than you want to go and keep you a lot longer than you ever wanted to stay God sent his son Jesus who paid for our sin debt he's paid for that sin on the cross at Calvary and it does not require any payment in return and I know it's it's difficult for us we have to process because I myself I feel like I owe so much to the Lord how can I repay that how can I repay all the kindness how can I repay what is how can I repay for that grace of God how can I is, how there's no way I can repay that debt We sing the songs, all to Jesus, I surrender all to him, I freely give. You know, when it says all, what does that mean to you? Often our mind kind of rushes to the things that perhaps maybe 
uh, you know, those good things because we don't want to give anything bad. But wait, did you know what you need to you need to bring your burdens to him. You need to bring your sickness to him. You need to bring your cares to him. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Jesus. I mean, why would God do something this extravagant? I ask you, is there anyone that you know of, any entity in all of creation that was a, that as extravagant of a of a of a, a giver as God? Look at what He's done for us, for His glory, and He's done it for our good. I've always said this before. You know, we give God the glory because His glory is for our good. Jesus paid our debt. Not just so you could get to heaven. I, I just think that's that's kind of neat. That we're, I, I, I got to get to heaven sometime. Amen? That, there's a good song about that. Did, did, did the devil try to keep me, tried to turn me around? No, he's not going to treat, no. I'm going to make it to heaven sometime. But in the meantime, I'm going to live for God. He saved us. Jesus paid our debt so that we could have a relationship with our heavenly father. Mm, yeah, somebody said, it. thank you, Jesus. You, you know, he, and, and think, God wants to spend time with us. God wants to spend time with us, and he wants to reveal his glory. He wants to reveal his goodness, his greatness, if you will. Look at Psalm 40, chapter five, or, or 40 verse 5. It says, many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done. I like this part. And your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than could be numbered. God knows about you. Now, I, I know it's, may, may, maybe I'm going to get all country on you, you know, and we, we know that uh, maybe that song, You Were Always On My Mind, should have been, what if God sang that to you? You're always on my mind. You're always on, did you know that you are on his mind? He wants to spend time with us. He sin, sin separated us from God. But when we put our faith in Jesus, that separation, I'll put that distance between us and him, is closed. It's removed. Just like David, we're filled with hope. Now, the change is pretty significant. It, it's so significant that others take notice. Look at verse 3. He says this. He says, um, He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our Lord. Many will see it and, and fear and, and will trust in the Lord. The change is so significant, it can't be ignored. Have you ever had some, somebody say, well, I, I, are you okay? And you said, yeah, I'm fine. You might want to tell your face. <laughs> I get asked that quite, quite often because sometimes my face is just blank. I said, I, I, of course, the, uh, whoever asks about it, I turn, give them a little bit of a smile, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I might be deep in thought just because there's not much of an expression, but you might want to tell your face. Tell your face about the Lord. Tell, remind You have to remind yourself and why it is that you're so happy. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eyes on the sparrow. And I know his eyes watching me. Amen? So he thinks about us. He's watching over us. And, and just like we, we can't even... We can't even fathom receiving a new home or a car for free. Yeah. It always comes with something attached to it. We often find it hard to believe that God rep requires absolutely no repayment for this incredible gift. It, what's this? It is by grace you are saved. Oh, by the way, it's a free gift. It's not like that th that 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 pop up on your phone, that popped up on your Facebook, that, that you got in the mail. You know, for, it's a free gift, but there seems to be strings attached to most of those gifts. Anybody notice that? Mm -hmm. But when God offers a free gift, it's free. Amen. You see, the fact is, Jesus paid our debt, and our debt is paid in full. 
It's, it's paid absolutely in full. We, we could never repay him, nor do we need to. You know, the only thing left to do, how do I put this? I, I guess the only thing left to do is to, uh, to get to know this generous God. I mean, to have a relationship. I know it's not about religion. It's about relation. That's what I'm sharing with you right now. It's about relation. And to share that story that you have. Well, look at this. What, what's he say here in verse uh, 10? I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. You got a testimony? You need to be sharing it. You need to learn how to tell this story. But as well, you need to learn how to have a relationship with God so it's not just a tale. Something that I had mentioned, uh, and I think it's actually in last week's bulletin, uh, it's better to possess, to possess than merely profess. You got Jesus? Don't just profess you got Jesus, but own it. But somebody turn, turn to your neighbor and say, I own it in Jesus' name. So, well, well, again, you know, the, the only thing left for us to do is to share that story with others. In, in verse 9, he says, I have proclaimed the good deeds of the, uh, uh, the good news of righteousness in the great assembly. I, indeed, I do not restrain my lips. And Lord, you know it. I'll, you know yourself. What I, you know me. You don't want to come to the end of your days and have him say, you don't know me. And I don't know you. The wonderful thing is we get to know him. We get to share him. So as we do, we discover the faithful and merciful God that David sings about, that David wrote about. And like David, we can take joy in all of his doing. What does he say in verse 8? He says, I delight in your will, O my God, and your law is within my heart. That's good stuff right there. I delight in your will. We say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. And for me, this, this, is, this is the earthen vessel. I mean, I understand the earth as a whole, but in this vessel, in this earth, your will be done in me. And everybody who wanted that said what? Amen. Amen. So let me ask these questions and maybe give you something. We'll, we'll talk about this for a few minutes here, but for maybe some others who maybe catch this later on. Uh, write this down. I'll, I'll go very slow. Do you ever feel like you owe God something? Do you ever feel like you owe God something? So the question would be, well, why would that be? Why is that? Next question. What are some ways we might try to pay God back for salvation? What are some ways that we might try to pay God back for salvation? Finally, who do you know that needs to hear the good news of God's love? Who do you know? And, and so... In regard to all this, perhaps maybe as we close, perhaps we should ask God for an opportunity to share our story. Now I'm not going to. Build, I'm, I'm just going to give you this. Perhaps your story, in order to be real, you have to show your scars. Perhaps our story, in order to be real and believable, you might have to say, you know, I understand that I can't pay God back. And I'm struggling with that. Maybe you can be honest. And then you tell them why you feel you want to go back to the first question. Do you ever feel like you owe God something? Why is that? God's been good. Oh, so good to me. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's all go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Father, tonight, Lord, as we continue our study through the Psalms as we've been in most lately, we thank you, Lord, for your word. But Lord, we thank you so much for your spirit, the very heart of Christ that is in us. So tonight we ask ourselves, 
Are we truly in submission to you? Do I really feel like I owe a debt? Or are the things that we're doing tonight, is it because we desire that others would know you? Lord, help us. Help us to keep our, our thoughts and our words and our deeds in line with your will for our life. Lord, we know, Father, there'll be arguments. We know that there'll be disagreements. But, Lord, the goal is not to win an argument, but to remain faithful. To remain faithful in, in our own salvation, in our own relation with you, and also, Lord, in the building up of other people. And I believe tonight, Lord, that's what it means to think of others greater than us greater than ourselves. Oh, we have you, Lord. We have the Spirit. We have that precious, precious Word of God. But there are those who don't. Help us, Lord, to use the Word properly. Help us, Lord, to examine ourselves and confess our own sins. Help us to be transparent to the world as we ourselves are growing in our faith. It's a, a relationship that is in constant state of development. Thank you, Lord, that you have not left us without help. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us comfort and offered hope, especially in these last days. And we give you all praise, honor, and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said...